more than any other team, you guys have played back to back at this tournament than you obviously went 75 against South Africa. I know you came off earlier in goal the last day out, but how do you guys feel physically think as a group bounced into this game and have played all those games and, and with high ball and play last weekend as well? Um, yeah, like obviously, like you said, it was a very high ball and play time last week, but um, we're looked after incredibly well by um, by our coaches, and we're feeling like we've we've, we've just started the tournament nearly. Like we're we're mentally fresh and physically fresh as well coming into this weekend. So um, yeah, I think that's incredibly positive for uh, for the whole team to be like that. And like I said, we've just been really well looked after. I wonder the player that you're both players both players have come on on the scene that has been relatively hard in this relationship, you know, beating them, you've lost to them, it's been a, um, a really good ride over during this time. Compared to how you just felt about the All Blacks growing up, how have you kind of demystified that, that jersey and that team? Um yeah, like obviously Irish rugby has come such a long way um even in the last four years since the last World Cup, but I remember like growing up watching the All Blacks and I remember John Alamo, he was my favourite player growing up. I had the chance of meeting him when I was younger as well when they came to play in Dublin. So uh, yeah, like they're an incredible team still like, and they're, they'll be a huge, uh, huge challenge for us this weekend. But um, yeah, I think we can take, uh, take a lot of confidence from, from our previous um, encounters with them. Um, yeah, I'm just back our own ability and, and we have that belief that uh, from our previous performances against yeah. Gary, uh, you got a lot of attention and praise for taking that ball out there on your foot. Um, how much did you enjoy last week? You looked like you really were going to thrive on that stage. And how easy was it to, to play that on the wing? Um, it certainly wasn't easy. It was once or twice. Uh, I was roaring to Mac on the sideline because I forgot one of the roles that the winger was supposed to do. So um, we're, we're challenged um, as backs to be across everything detail-wise. Um, so when you have I mean, Stu stepping in, uh, myself going to the wing, Jenison going to the wing, um, yeah, it's part of the challenge. And uh, it, was, it was a tough all game and considering the, the quality of Scotland of their attack that we knew that was coming. Um, and then their organisation defence, we knew we had to be fizzing and at our best to try and break it down and equally deal with them. So I guess from my own, from myself, feeding off the energy of the, the others around me kind of helped. Andrew, to what extent um, do you feel that that Ireland back row is, is reinventing, the front row is reinventing the front row play? Last Saturday in 48 minutes you managed between you 12, 11 and 11 tackles, I think, with just one miss. Is there a sense that something's evolving or that, that as a unit that you've got something to three of you together? Um, I'm not sure it's just us reinventing it or anything, but I think it's just the way the game is going. It's an it's incredibly fast game, and given the fact that the ball and play time was so high last week, we were just forced to get through a lot more work. So, um, hey, look, it's, it's, it's just how I think we've been conditioned, how we've been prepared, especially in, the, in our preseason. Our, our, our SNC coaches have prepared us incredibly well physically, but we've also been really well mentally prepared by uh, by Gary Keegan, our, our kind of mental skills coach. So it's it's about kind of bringing yourself to to that kind of dark place in your mind where you know you're going to have to get through a lot of work. But uh, um, it's it's really kind of um, you take a lot of confidence from the from the guys either side of you as well, being then being able to get through so much work. Is Paul Cole involved in, in, in that tackling defensive? Playing, rugby playing thing. Yeah, like like well, Paulie would be kind of all over a lot of things. Like he, um, like he'd take a lot of his previous experiences playing. Like he he would have known, um, better than than better than a lot of other people. Just kind of what it takes uh, at this level and kind of where you have to go mentally as well as physically in the game. So he's been he's obviously been a huge uh, addition to this squad and um, for all not just forwards but also for the backs as well. Yeah, hi Gary. Uh, just going back to playing on the wing, how often would you run that position in training and how often are people dipping in and out of positions that, that they might not necessarily be totally familiar with? Um, I suppose frequently enough, uh, yeah, to answer your question, frequently enough in training. Um, very often some guys might be managing load-wise, so we'd be encouraged to 
test out different positions and be across it, but I suppose even say Catty and, and Faz and some of the attacking detail um, to, to fully understand how something works, you've got to be aware of what other people are doing around you as well as your own role, which um, then kind of adds and helps so even if you haven't maybe got reps in a certain position during the week because of the, the, the general understanding and the expectation of understanding we'd have in each other and that helps too. Boys, Andy here. Um, this is building up as being one of the, the great ever test matches. Do you see this as the biggest ever test match for Ireland in their history, in their rugby history? Um, it's a big question, I know, but yeah, it's a big question. <laughs> uh, better this time. I mean, I don't want to say no because I'm well aware of what's at stake. Um, but I, I guess how how we'd be looking at it is it's it's an opportunity to do something. Um, that no other Irish team has done. So, um, having said that, we can't control the, the result or the outcome, but what we can control is, is how well we prepare. Um, so, off the back of the win last week, we obviously found out and knew who we were facing, and it was pretty much from sun, Sunday all hands on deck preparing uh, as best we can because against the a side of New Zealand's quality, um, that's what it takes. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but that's kind of what is certainly motivating us. It, it's an opportunity. Hey Gary, it seems like you'll have a busy day at 13 defensively. What kind of specific challenge do you do in back on this quick post? Um, I guess some of the specifics would be Rico, uh, his ability, his footwork at the line, um, his speed. Uh, his, his skills in contact, being able to keep the ball alive, and um, they'd be, be some to start in terms of his quality. And um, then you have the Barretts as well, who are exceptional readers of the game. I think they've all played multiple positions across the back line, which is a, a testament to them, to, to their ability. So, and um, I'm, I'm, I haven't even started talking about the wingers and the, the danger they have out there. So. It's, it's really being alert and, and ready for, for everything, or trying to be at least. Um, it's almost a, a mental fitness as, a, as opposed to a physical fitness. You just gotta, there's no moment to switch off. You just gotta expect um, the unexpected and, and be ready. And, and if they do catch it, um, react as best we can and scramble as best we can um, to, to deal with the threats. So. Gary, not my actual question, but did you play any soccer? At any stage, it's a serious question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I used to play a bit of soccer on uh, rugby on a Sunday in school and soccer, or rugby on a Saturday for school, and then I didn't tell the coaches I played a bit of soccer on Sunday. Who did you play with? Oh, there was a team growing up, St. James's Athletic in Dublin, and then in secondary school it was Granada um, with a couple of mates. It was not serious, it was more just a couple of mates and a few of the dads were coaches. So. You learned something. Sorry, the, the real question. Um, <laughs> Somebody asked Johnny earlier about can you see the influence, influence of Joe uh, in the All Blacks from, from watching them over the last uh, year or so. Just your take on that. Can you see Joe Schmidt's um, influence there yet? Um, yeah, I think they've, they've probably leveled up a bit in, in their attack. Um, I'm sure it's Joe and, and a couple of other coaches in there. But um, yeah, from, from our own ex my own experience with them, knowing the, the quality of coaching. That, that he delivers, um, yeah, would be the answer that, that, that they've definitely improved um, and gotten better their, their ability to take on the line, some of the, the tight shapes they run, their, their kicking game. These are things that I think New Zealand have always been good at, but definitely, I mean, if you look over the past four games, um, have really reinforced that. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, question for both of you, please. Um, the tour last year to New Zealand, I understand, was designed partly to kind of replicate the experience of a World Cup. Can you give any specific examples of things that, how that's benefiting you, logistical stuff or anything that's helping in the, uh, now you're in the knockout rounds? Uh, it's a tough question. Yeah, um, no, I, I think the, uh, maybe it's not just even the, the tour to New Zealand, but being challenged <coughs> across the Six Nations and, and November series, the summer tour, is to always be adaptable from, um, 
an individual perspective. So in game, um, whether it's Josh from the rear throwing in the line out or Jemison playing on the wing, like they were always challenged uh, from that perspective. Then some of the logistics stuff, moving um, hotels week on week, uh, maybe training ground facilities varying week on week, stuff like that. That that uh, fads would always have the no ex no excuse mentality um, and have a level of expectation for us to deliver when we're training and preparing, um, regardless of any circumstances around us. So. I don't know if both agrees, but that's been something that's been consistent for the last, whatever, four years. Um, so, yeah, it, it all kind of does help um, when here when there's a bit of movement and you're on the bus, off the bus, different hotels, that, that because it's been reinforced over the last couple of years, it's all good. Yeah, same. <laughs>